In this video, we're going to take a look at the difference between isotopes and ions, something that gives people a little bit of trouble. When we're talking about isotopes, these are versions of a particular element that have different number of neutrons. So the key is different number of neutrons. For example, we have three atoms here, and each one is carbon. That's because it has six protons. That's the atomic number for carbon. So it kind of defines what carbon is. Six protons. They're all carbon. We have carbon 12, 13, and 14. The difference, though, is we have six neutrons here. Six plus six gives us 12. Seven neutrons, seven plus six is 13. And then this has eight neutrons. These are isotopes of carbon because they have different numbers of neutrons. Ions, on the other hand, they're atoms, or sometimes molecules, that have lost or gained electrons. So they have an electrical charge. Examples would be these elements here that have a plus or a minus after them. These are considered ions. They have a charge. They've lost electrons if they're positive, and if they're negative, they've gained electrons. If there's nothing written here as the superscript, there's no plus or minus, just the Na, for example, that's considered a neutral atom where the number of protons and electrons are equal, and it doesn't have a charge. The big thing to remember, ions involve electrons. Isotopes involve neutrons. So pause and figure out which of these can best be classified as ions and which can best be classified as isotopes. So anything with a charge after it, like Cl minus the chloride ion, that's an ion. Ca2 plus the calcium ion, that's an ion. We also know if the protons and electrons aren't equal, that's an ion as well. When we look at something like oxygen-17 or O17, that's called the hyphen notation, and we use that to identify isotopes. So this is an isotope, and oxygen over here, that's an isotope. We also know that these are isotopes. This is called nuclear notation. The 10, that's the same because that's the atomic number, the number of protons. Neon always has 10 protons. The top is the mass number, protons plus neutrons. What's different here is the neutrons. So these are isotopes of neon. For the two atoms of lithium with different number of neutrons, different neutrons, that means isotopes. Then for Na up here, sodium, there's no charge, so it's not an ion. It's going to be neutral. We really don't have a lot more information. Let's just leave that as a neutral atom. A question we should be asking ourselves right now is, can an isotope also be an ion? So let's build an atom and see. So we'll start out, let's do lithium. That has atomic number three, so that has three protons. There's one, two, three. Three protons, atomic number three, lithium. And right now it's an ion because we only have these positive protons. Let's add some electrons and make it neutral. One, two, three. These cancel out. We have a neutral atom. But we wanted to talk about an ion. And lithium, it usually loses one electron, because it's in group one, to form a positive ion. So here's our lithium ion. One, two, three. And this is a stable isotope of lithium. It's called lithium one, two, three, four, five, six. Lithium six. If we add another neutron, we'll make lithium seven. Will it still be an ion? The answer is yes, it's still an ion. So isotopes, they can gain or lose electrons to become ions. So isotopes involve neutrons and ions involve electrons. But isotopes, they have electrons, so they can lose or gain those to form ions. On the periodic table, there's a very clear pattern for ions. Group 1 forms 1 plus ions. Group 2 forms these 2 plus, and so on. The transition metals, we really don't know their charge. We have to see what they're bonded to. But there's really no trend on the periodic table for isotopes. Many elements on the periodic table do have isotopes. In fact, tin has 10. But we really don't have a clear trend for isotopes like we do with ionic charge. One thing to note is that it's pretty easy to make these ions. It's very common in chemistry. Isotopes, that's a little different. You need a supernova, maybe a particle accelerator, or maybe nuclear decay would form some isotopes. It's difficult to remove or add neutrons to an atom. But electrons, in general, are fairly easy to remove since they're on the outside of the atom. Isotopes, chemically and physically, they behave 
pretty much the same. Carbon-12 and carbon-13 are hard to tell apart. And we sort of ignore them in chemistry, but ions are very different. Put some NaCl in water, it'll dissolve into Na plus and Cl minus. Na plus, no problem. If you put neutral sodium, just Na in water, boom. In chemistry, we're often concerned about ions, not so much about isotopes. That tends to be more physics. This is Dr. B with Isotopes versus Ions. Thanks for watching.